Hold on, Carlo, hold on. Tony! Ah! So many Shambas to shape. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice. While learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. <sighs> Karo, climate change is real. Can you imagine that this used to be a permanent river? Yeah. And now, Tony, it's all sand. Mm. Farmers are forced to dig deeper into the sand to get water. Each and every one of us need to play our part in protecting the environment. We need to be at the forefront to make sure that our farmers' shambas do not get to this. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. This week, we are in Makueni County. My name is Francis Munuve. I'm a farmer. I do farming with my wife. My name is Mary Francis. I normally have 60 Francis in farming. I have got three kids, two boys, and a girl. I've been farming for about 15 years now. I can say it is a good asshole because through farming is where I fetch money for my survival, to pay fees for them and also to build a house and many other things outside there. I find farming very interesting. Here is money in farming. Hey, Mary! Yes? Hello, how are you? Hello. I'm fine, thank you. Francis? Yes. Yes, we are finally here. What challenges are you facing, Francis? Shortage of rains. You will find that it's making us hard to do farming. Are you farming as a business or are you just farming to, to eat? Of course, we are farming as a business. Yes. Yeah. Mary and Francis went on to explain that they really need help with their chicken, maize, finances, and climate change. We come with the experts, and we make sure that by the time we're leaving your shamba, you are one step ahead towards realizing your dreams. We expect more from you. Ah, oh, thank good, you. Good. And for now, we need to go and set up our tent. Yes. All right? Okay. All right. We'll see you in a bit. We'll see you huh? in a bit. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. When I heard Shamba Shape Up coming, I was very, very delighted because I knew I learned one more two things and that knowledge to our, to our family. At the heart of every farm is making money. You've got to plan how to make your farm your business. Ah, well, well, well. Mary and Francis. Yes. What's going on here? We are packing this spinach to take to the market. Where is the market? Water Town. And how many sacks have gone so far? Four bags. Four bags? Yeah. That means there is some money, isn't there? Of yeah. course. <laughs> okay, okay. I have an idea. I have an idea. I'll be back. Mary and Francis have a very good plan. Mary takes care of the market side of things while Francis runs the farm. Can they do even better? Diba, a financial expert from Ilri, is here to ensure they do. Uh, we know for every farmer. They need to be sure of their market. Question I want to ask Mary, do they keep records of what they are selling and how much maybe they are selling? Mary, do you keep records? Yes, we do. How do you keep them? Through invoice. You have invoices? Yeah, invoices yes. for spinach. Tomatoes, we write them down. Is there anything that you keep in the memory? The small produce. Like what? Like when a customer needs five kgs. So that one you decide I'm keeping that in the pocket. I'm yeah. not writing it down. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. If this is business, you need to know if it is sales per week, how much you're making, and also the expense, what you are giving out or buying out. So the way you are saying there's some small 
produce or sales you are making that you are not recording. Yeah. Those are very important. Maybe those are the profit you are making, you don't know. I would like to show her how that is done. Yes. Mary, you see here is in. Yeah. So in is what you are making in terms of sales, the revenue, and here is out. Yeah. And these are the expenses, what you are buying out in terms of pesticide, fertilizers, you know, yeah. labor, everything. If it is skooma, do it in a different page from the spinach and the tomatoes. What if a customer wants only three tomatoes? Even if it's 50 shillings. When keeping farm records, ensure you have entered every single expense or sale, no matter how small. So in your shamba, you've got goats yes. and you've got chicken and you've got cows. Yeah. Do you make money from any of those? Yeah, from the goats. From the goats? Yeah. The chicken are for consumption. Eating? Yeah. The cow provides us with the milk. Should there be a record of the livestock that the farmer has kept, even if they're not bringing in any money? Yes, because Either way, it either brings you money in or there's money going out of your pocket. For example, yeah. they have expense because you have to buy medicine. So there's a money going out of your pocket. Also, you need to know which product uh, you are incurring a lot of costs. Mary, yes. with all these things that you have in your shamba, do you think you've had enough? No. You want to add more? Yeah. What do you want to add in? Chicken. What kind of chicken farming? He brewed chicken needs. Usually, I do get customers in need to buy them. They come to you? Yeah. Then you do what? I buy from other customers and I sell. So you go to another farmer with yeah. a chicken and you sell to this farmer yeah. at a profit? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but you'd rather be doing the business yourself. Yeah. Secondly, uh -huh. when we harvest the skooma, the spinach, there is waste. Those chicken can feed from the waste. She seems to have done her research and there is need and there is demand. So she knows her market very well. But uh, there is a bit of challenges, Mary, also that comes with the chicken rearing. Chicken also attract a lot of diseases. You need to think about that. And also the feeds. There is uh, produce waste like else, but uh, I mean the supplements. It's a bit also expensive. You just need to think around those two challenges. Let's just take a rough example. Let's say for this week, how much do you make from uh, your sales? Like 10. 10,000? Yeah. Mary, are you a member of any group? Yeah, I have. Chama. Uh -huh. We do table banking. They are already having good savings. Yes. And she's also in a group. They can borrow from the groups. Mm -hmm. yeah. Circles are very good for farmers. You can save a small amount daily or weekly or monthly. The more you save, the easier it will be to get a loan at low interest rates. So my advice is them to start with uh, maybe a few birds, 30, 40, 50, so that they can expand from there. And we look for other experts to help you in your new chicken business. Okay. Okay. Improved Kenyaji chicken are a good start to chicken farming as they make you money from the meat and the eggs. Francis. Yes. How's it going? I'm feeding my chicken. Okay, how many are they? They are around 10. I'm planning to have more. You want to have more? Yeah. Do you know how to go about it? Somehow, I'm not. You're not sure? Yeah. I might just have the solution for you. Okay. I'll thank be you. right back, Francis. Thank you. Okay. Mary and Francis really want to get into chicken farming, but lack the proper knowledge to start off properly. That is why we have called in Vincent, an expert from Kenchik, to get them started. He's been keeping chicken, but he wants to go into agribusiness. So he wants to keep chicken and make money out of them. So let's start with the basic building, the construction, the structure, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to the standard. And after that, my friend here can now went in, into the business. Mm -hmm. What does our farmer need to do to have this basic house that is up to the standards that are required? By using the most available material mm -hmm. within his reach. Mm -hmm. Wood structure, well ventilated, good orientation. If you look at this compound, this homestead, where would be the ideal location for the chicken house? The ideal location should be somewhere there. 
we get to work bringing down the old kitchen that sometimes also housed the chickens and build a completely new chicken shed in that space. The bricks will be used for the floor. It is hard work. Kamau has a big task. Build a chicken house as quickly as possible. The first thing is building the shade. To measure the shade, the spacing needs to work out at one and a half square foot for every bird. Kamau is building 10 feet by 12 feet. Enough for 80 birds. The chicken shed should also run in an east to west direction lengthwise. This is to avoid direct sun or wind going into the shed. It should be open on both long sides with curtains that can be folded up and down to control the heat. The floor should be cemented and the entrance fitted with a foot bath. Understanding climate change can be very difficult. The most important thing is to understand how to adapt to this challenge. Mary, there you are. Now look, there are so many friends that a farmer needs in the shamba. Are the rains your friend? No. Oh all. no, what happened? There is very little. Now we have an expert yes. who knows everything there is, you yes. know, about the rains. And he'll talk to you as soon as we get Francis. Let's get him. Come. It's becoming more and more challenging for Mary and Francis to farm. They have to change the way they do things. To help them understand adaptation better, we have called in our friend Paul Murage from the Meteorological Department. Now, Mary, where are we? What's the name of this village? Duduni Village. Duduni Village? Yeah. In which county, Francis? Makueni County. When are your long rains here? October to December. Is that true, Francis? March, April to May. You know what? We are lucky because we have Mr. Murage here, an expert here. Kenya, we have two lane for seasons. March, April, May, and October, mm -hmm. November, December. But depending on your location in this country, in Makueni and the Lower Eastern, the October, November, December are your long rains and they are most reliable. The March, April, May, those are the long rains in other parts of the country. So you have to know the location you are in. Different weather patterns for different locations. Mary, you are light. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, here in Duduni village, are there some spots that you see raining and some areas are not raining? Yeah. They are on the mountains. Sometimes there rain passes that way, and here it does not rain. It disappears. It yeah. sees you, then takes off. Yeah. <laughs> Why is that happening? It's worth to note that Lainfo does not follow political or administrative boundaries. <laughs> it's determined even by the terrain, the hills, yeah, which are bordering your area. It's not witchcraft, like what Ratoni is saying, that the rainfall has seen you and disappeared. Those are climatic uh, conditions. If you are adjacent to a forest, you'll be receiving more info. Hills and mountains can affect the microclimate of an area. The windward side is a side into which the wind blows. This area tends to have more rainfall as the winds blow rain clouds. The hill slows them down and the rain falls. The other side, the leeward, tends to be dry, receiving little to no rain. Places near big water bodies, such as lakes or rivers, tend to get more rain too. When the sun hits the water, the water rises into the sky and comes down as rainfall. What would you advise a farmer now who lives in a place where, according to the forecast, it is going to rain? In Dunduni, yep. yet I'm in Dunduni and it's not raining, but I can see my neighbors are getting rains. Don't use the Makueni forecast. It's so generalized, Makueni is in the Kubwa, it's big. Yeah. 
So even Nunguni, you look, where am I in this particular area? What do you do to make use of the little water that you get? I had bought some tanks. Mm -hmm. I normally used to tap rainwater and also due to the climatic changes which have occurred so far, if it is planted mains or whatever, I plant them on time. Yes. So that I can at least get something. The little amount we see per month, I can say for someone who is very keen on what he is doing on the shamba, he is likely to get something. So there's nothing like little rain? Yeah. There's nothing like, like little rain. It's how you plan it. Yeah. I have observed. Now you had maize here, you had dengo, even you have the fruit trees and the bananas. Yeah, I yeah. can see you are having some peace. Mm. This is what now you are saying you have diversified. Even if you are, you are to lose the maize, you have the fruits. Yeah. So this is adaptation. You have irrigation water. Yeah. Due to that we have climate change where we are having late start of the lanes, you can plant the maize using the irrigation water. Just maybe one month prior to the start of the lane, then you leave it to grow with the, maize. With the lanes. To be a climate smart farmer, plant your maize a month before the onset of the rains by using drip irrigation. This way, when the rain begins, your crop is ahead, meaning you can harvest early and get a better price. From Francis, there is nothing like literally. Don't steal that from Francis. <laughs> you have to be paying him. Yeah, Every like time you said that, you pay him. <laughs> Thank you. He's not only a farmer, but a good businessman. Thank you very much. Coming up after the break, we learn about soil health. The chicken shed takes shape and we get some new guests inside it. Mmm, looks like the chicken shed is coming along nicely. Welcome back to Shamba Shepherd. In this part, Francis and Mary start their poultry business. But first, we learn about soil health in dry areas. Most shambas that young people work on are normally inherited, which means they've been worked on over the years. How do we ensure that the soil remains fertile and that it can hold moisture? With the ever-changing climate, ensuring we get a good harvest is getting more and more challenging. But there are ways to improve on your soils, and so we have called in Boaz Waswa from Siat to help our farmers with this. How long have you been planting maize here? Now I've got allowed 10 to 15 years planting. Mm -hmm. And before I got planting maize here, my father was used to plant, even his father which is my grandfather, mm -hmm. used this sham. So basically this land has always been tilled? Yeah. All right. What challenges are you facing? The more you, you, use, you use soil, mm. you are, the soil becomes barren. 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 Yeah. A land that is ploughed every year definitely loses the soil fertility. Mm. Continuous ploughing, you are planting crops, you are harvesting crops from there, you are taking the nutrients away. You are turning the soil, it gets weakened over time and over time. I've walked around the farm and I've observed a number of things. That the land is bare. It is feeling all the heat from the time when you've harvested your crop to the next crop. So we need to do something to cover our soil. When soil is exposed to the harsh sun, the heat dries up any moisture left. It kills off microorganisms that give life to the soils and destroys some nutrients in the soil. Use what you have on the farm to mulch. They have quite a lot of residues on the farm, from the maize residues, I've seen the banana residues, we've seen the gravilla and all that. You can use the same material, just as mulch, the way they are, and you cover your soil. Mm -hmm. And that way your soil remains cool. The second thing, soil testing. Yeah. They will tell you which nutrient is available, sufficient quantity, which one is lacking, and what you need to do for every particular crop then you can add in the right nutrients. Because if you just put in anything, you're wasting your fertilizer, you're wasting your nutrients. The other thing that we need to look at, because this land has also been plowed for many years, 
How do you prepare your land? We normally use oxen uh -huh. and they are plow. Plow everywhere. everywhere. Turn it, turn it around and turn it around. Yeah. When you plow, you expose all your soil to the heat. And therefore, the little nutrients, the little water that is there is lost. So we need to practice also what we call minimal tillage. Uh -huh. When planting, only make holes where the seeds will be planted. Add manure from your livestock and blended fertilizer, which adds the right nutrients into your soil. Mulch over the soil to protect it from the harsh sun. And the other thing is also to choose your crops very well. Crops that will ensure that we have cover on the soil. And the, some of the good crops to grow are the legumes. Uh -huh. When you plant legumes, rotating them with your maize or with your sorghum, then the legumes will help to improve soil fertility. This area is well known for legumes. Yeah. So which ones are you planting in particular in Oshamba? Cow peas. Mm -hmm. Pigeon peas. Uh -huh. So boys, are they on the right track? These are the right crops for this particular area, considering also that these are climate smart varieties. Uh -huh. Most of these legumes that they have mentioned take a shorter time to grow and therefore are important for your geographical area. That's a good choice. Uh -huh. Legumes take nitrogen from the air and put it back into the soil, making your soils more fertile. In addition to the fruit trees which I've seen around, I notice also you have gravelia and you have other trees that uh, you are growing on the farm. These are also very important. One, as windbreak. Two, as also trees that drop leaves and those leaves can also improve your soil fertility. Mm -hmm. Adding trees stops the wind from blowing away your soils, creates shade and drops leaves that cover your soil. Francis and Mary also use manure to improve their soils. That is one way of making sure that in a dryland areas like these ones, you apply manure in your planting spaces and therefore you can hold your water for longer. And therefore it's a climate smart practice mm -hmm. that you're already adopting. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Weather and Farming News for Kenya. In the coming week, we expect no or very little rainfall across Kenya north, upper and lower eastern, including Mandera, Wajia, Isiolo, Meru, Taraka, Kitui, Makueni and Kajado, will see very low rains of less than 5 mm across the week. However, the lower parts of Garissa will be expecting up to 50 mm of total rains. The coastal counties will get moderate levels of rains ranging up to 50 mm across the week. This includes Lamu, Kilifi, Mombasa and Kwale. Tana River and Taita Taveta, however, will have lower total rains of below 15 mm with areas near the coastline getting up to 50 mm of rains in the week. Central Kenya counties such as Moranga, Kirinyaga and Embu, as well as Nairobi and Kiambu will see very low rains of less than 5 mm across the week. However, Laikipia, Nyandarwa and Nyeri might get up to 50 mm of rains in the week. The north, central and south Rift Valley will receive moderate rains of up to 50 mm across the week. This spans across Trukana, West Pokot, Baringo, Wasingishu, Samburu, Bomet, Kericho, Nakuru to Narok. The western Nyanza regions will get low to moderate levels of rains, ranging between 5 to 50 mm in the week. This cuts across counties of Busia, Kakamega, Bungoma, Vihiga to Siaya, Kisumu, Nyamira, Kisi, and Biguri. Farmer, if you're in the arid and semi-arid areas and moving your cattle in search of pasture, this may lead to widespread tick infestation. Spray or dip your cows weekly with the caricides to control tick and tick-borne diseases. Weed your farm by hand pulling or using a selective weed killer to avoid disturbing the soil. Apply mulch where possible to prevent water from being lost to the air. If you've planted fodder trees such as Lusan or Kaliandra, cut back the young trees when they are about 2 meters tall down to 1 meter. This will encourage lateral growth and lead to high yields. Aim to harvest every 3 to 4 months for the best, most nutritious fodder. For more tips and detailed focus for your area, get in touch with iShamba. Call 0711-082-606. I am Brenda. See you next week on the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. The chicken shed is done. It is being disinfected just as the expert advised. Well done, Kamau. Now it's time to bring in the chicks.
by hope. Vincent, our expert from Ken Chick, is back to ensure that the chicken shed is up to standard. It has been a few days and all seems okay. There is a foot bath at the entrance. The curtains roll downwards. The outside is sealed to ensure no rodents go in. The corners of the brooder are rounded to ensure the chicks do not crowd and suffocate. And we have a nice layer of wood shavings. Just one small adjustment to the jiko and we are done. Before the chicks get onto the farm, ensure the feeders and drinkers are cleaned and dried in the sun. Once done, add vitamins into the water and place in the shade. Put chick and duckling mash, spread evenly. So the shade is closed and warm. Time for the chicks to come in. When the chicks arrive, make sure the box holds the type and number of chicks that you ordered. Don't worry if the chickens are moving slowly at first. They might be tired from the journey. They should get active after a few minutes. So Vincent, yes. I am seeing different types of chicks. We call it cannibal family. Huh? You know, in a family setup, we have tall, short, black, blah, blah, blah. Canbro chicks come in various looks. The naked neck, tricolor, speckled, or kanga, and red. Francis and Mary, Mary mm. have to take care of, of these chicks. When it is too cold, it is too hot, you check on the temperature. That's why we have the heat source. Number two, we are saying hygiene is key during this first stage. Ensure that the feeders, drinkers are clean. The foot bath the disinfectant is always availed. Restrict movement of people. These are no go zones for visitors. Mm -hmm. Ensure there's feed, there's clean water always. What about these sheets? This one we are only using them so that the bird don't strain, don't struggle to find where the feed is. Which means the birds will grow uniform. Use the sheets of paper for the first three days. After this, start using the flat feed trays. We prefer wood shaving, but not the, so the sodas. The sodas is very fine. So the chick cannot differentiate between feed the and the sodas. And it should be at least three inches thick to absorb the fecal material that at the end of the production, this is manure. How am I going to feed them? So we are saying the first phase is the chick phase. We are feeding them with chick and duckling mash for the first eight weeks. And we are feeding them day and night. Uh, what about diseases? These are pre-vaccinated chicks, Agnes Marex, Newcastle, and Umboro. And Francis and Mary will be given also a guideline, a vaccination schedule. Such a such a day need to vaccinate A, B, C, D. So Vincent, yes. what does the farmer do if they want to add more? You can reach us through our social media platform. Mary and Francis are now happy farmers. They are farming as a business. Shama yes. Shepap has been here with you. Your presence here has been indeed very helpful to us. Yes. We have gained some knowledge. Some knowledge. A lot mm -hmm. on every particular part. What stands out for you? I will never forget the knowledge I got from chicken farming. Uh -huh. We have other farmers to see who need our help. So what you can say right now is... Um, Goodbye!